Yes, and we're certainly well on our way to Wembley now, down the M40. We've had a change of plan. We were going down the A40, but we've switched routes now, so I hope the driver knows where it's going. And Kevin Ratcliffe alongside me here, the, uh, the Everton captain. The, the car score already uh, underway. How are you getting on, Kevin? Not too good at the moment. No, uh, Sharpie seems to be raking in all the morning. <laughs> so. How does the mood of the party compare? Because you're on this route what, just a few weeks ago. It's uh, pretty much the same, really. You know, uh, nothing's changed. Uh, the same sort of preparation as before. You know, and uh, I think we're all sitting in the same seats actually. So you know, that's pretty, that's pretty much the same. <laughs> how much has the uh, the Milk Cup final whetted the players' appetite now for success today? Well, we know how important it is to get there and do well for the fans. But um, they were saying that Liverpool were the favourites, and I think that there's no favourites in this game because we proved that in the last time we played them at Wembley. So hopefully, you know, we got right, out with the right attitude today. Now, uh, Andy Gray with me here at the moment. Uh, a day, Andy, I'm sure you've been looking forward to all your life. Yeah, all, all sort of nine years of it, certainly, and uh, especially since the lads have got to the Milk Cup final, I've been looking forward to trying to get back again this year, and it's all worked out nicely. And some talk of perhaps a record today, you score the winning goal in a Milk Cup final, and uh, nobody scored one in both domestic cup finals. I no, hope so, I hope so, I just like to see it. It's nice to see the lads nice and relaxed, and they're all still sleeping at the back here. <laughs> I must admit, they don't seem to be too many nerves around today, do they? No, at the moment, no, I mean, it's, it's a nice relaxed squad, and... Uh, only when Ratties gets on the TV, everybody starts to fall asleep. But apart from that, we're all right. You know, we're looking forward to it. And no, uh, not really a card score going here. There's one going back there. I've, I've mucked up Kevin Ratto <laughs> by talking to him. He was throwing out while I was chatting. Oh, that's, that's only the baby league back there. They, they, they play for 10 P's and things like that. The real card school's down the front here with the big boys. <laughs> uh, we, don't like, we don't like to pull it out when the cameras are on. This is why we What do you see as the, uh, the key areas of the match today, Andy? I think if, if, our, if our back four can hold their front four, and I think that's that's going to be the main key. I think well, if we play as well as we can, I think we're good enough to win the game. But you know, you can never tell in, in a final. But I think if we're back four and uh, can deal with their front four sufficiently, then I think that's going to give us a good springboard to go on and win the game from. You'll be playing up front with with Graham Sharp today. How's the combination shaping up now? Do you think? Well, it's been on and off all season, but the, <laughs> <laughs> but the last few the last few games have been quite good. Sharp has got to sell back on the goal scoring trail again, and that, that can only be good for us and I'm hoping that he can continue. He scored in the last two, and if he can score again and today, then obviously that'll be great for us. I think the man who said he wasn't working too well was Adrian Heath, but he's, he's not doing a bad job just behind the team. You know, what, what left winger, you mean? <laughs> uh, he's, he's playing well in that left wing, Berth. <laughs> but I mean, we're a wee bit worried about his crossing. He's not really put many in the box for us so far. But we're hoping it'll come good in the night anyway. <laughs> Let's move across now to, uh, to Peter Reid, and, uh, a man who's really found his form this season. But I wonder, Peter, if uh, earlier on in the season you wondered if perhaps your career really taken a nosedive? Well, I don't think you think about them things. You just try and get on with your job, keep your head up and work hard and hope it comes right for you. And um, that's what's happened. They were a good set of lads playing with a good team, playing with a lot of confidence. Going to win a cup, so what more can you say? How do you see uh, the midfield area today? Graham Taylor says he expects you to, to see a lot of the ball. Well, I, I think um, every game's different, obviously, and I think it's just two teams out there, and uh, the best one will win on the day. I don't think it's about areas. I just think if we play better, then we'll win it, and vice versa. I don't, I don't tend to agree with areas or everything, because I get up, I get down, like most of the lads. Bales is a fair defender, but he'll get up. I mean, I think it's a team against a team, and as I say, the one who plays the best will come out on top. Who would you see today as the key players on the Watford side? People keep saying they don't have a midfield. Obviously, they, I mean, they're a good side, you wouldn't be here otherwise. And it's, it's, it's all about a team game. Obviously, Mo Johnson scores goals, two wide men are good players. But uh, they're dangerous off dead ball situations with the big boy Riley. So you can go on all day. So it's just down to like you doing the job. They've got a few dangerous men we have. Five or six minutes away from uh, when John Bailey in front of me has gone to sleep. So has Adrian Heath, just as I'm going to talk to him. <laughs> John, very much, of course, the uh, the arch joker in the cap. What have you been up to today? What have been your uh, your tricks today? Uh, not special. We had uh, another joker down this morning, Freddie Starr, called at the hotel this morning, so he took over from me. Uh, we were all hanging out the windows uh, of the rooms this morning, enjoying Freddie Starr, doing his bits and pieces, so uh, I took uh, settle fi second fiddle today. Howard Kennel. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> Howard Kennel was a bit worried that uh, you might not be in the, in the right mood, you might not be concentrating today, you're, you're more worried about the jokes of the japes, I'm sure not, that's uh, not no, really the case. I'm definitely in the right mood, that's my way of uh, bringing out my own tension anyway, you know, my mind's on the game without a doubt, but uh, 
you know, it's other people show theirs, but I show it in my own way. And Cluffy's just changed over the, the lads out. <laughs> my Cluffy's turned over, I think. And this is my own way. And we're nearly on our way to uh, Wembley now. Howard Kendall's with me, the manager. We're seeing quite a few uh, Everton fans en route and uh, waving you along. I think this is what everybody's look, been looking forward to, really, just seeing the fans when you're, when you're near in Wembley and actually getting out there and letting the fans see you. But, um, I remember the Milk Cup, and it was absolutely superb, all the way on roads, and they were all waving and shouting and whatever. And we're looking forward to it. Your players are yawning at the moment. I mean, yeah. They really are a hard lot to control, Howard. You've done a good job, I think, really. There'll be no problems. I mean, it, it's part of the build-up. I mean, they've, they've been relaxed at, at the same time. They know what job they've got to do today. Anyone see me pants? <laughs> <laughs> we're now just, I would think, uh, a couple of miles or so from the stadium, perhaps Come even less now, looking out the window. There's plenty of blue and white uh, hats around. I haven't seen too many Watford supporters at the moment, have <laughs> uh, It was very similar at the Mill Cup, actually. We couldn't see many red and white either. But, uh, no, they'll have their... But it's, I, mean, I, was, I mean, our fans are really looking forward to it, and I'm sure that they see it as the first, well, first opportunity since 1968 to win their FA Cup. Your memories flow back to your appearances in the Cup Finals as a player. I wonder what the journeys were like in, uh, in those days of the Cup Final. Well, very similar. What amazed me was the, the return journeys. Um, you know, I haven't been on a successful side yet in the FA Cup. You know, while we're doing this now, I was looking forward to today and hope it's successful. Chappell, they want to hit your lift. Have we got any room on the coach? I mean, look at them. I mean, it, <laughs> The, the players have really got a very close affection with the fans, and, and I think that more than anything, they'll want to do it for them today. There's a story of one chap who was queuing this week, it was asked how long he'd been queuing, and he said 14 years. That's right, he? that's right, he's queuing for his ticket. I mean, they've got a tremendous sense of humour, tremendous. Uh, no, I'll say, they've been waiting for so long, and we want to provide it. What do you think is going to be going through your mind when you walk down the tunnel? Graham Taylor was saying how he was thinking of the family and the friends and all those people who <laughs> supported him over the years. Well, yeah, I, th I think you, you do feel for them. I mean, you, you respect them, you admire them. I mean, they've followed you through the good times. Actually, that's the easy thing to do. But when they've followed you through the bad times, this is a little bit of a reward for them. <laughs>